Hey guys, my name is Lovelace and this time we're here with a high-pitched cry for help. So, we're all the way at chapter 5, not even halfway through this bitch. But, let's keep going. Azuku is smart, even when everyone tries to say otherwise. That is one thing in his life he was certain of. He could learn real quickly, and he always find a way to adapt to situations. He wasn't sure how to adapt to this one. After months of the absence of both his parents, things were finally falling apart. The first thing that ran out was obviously food, but he found a way around that, even if it took a toll on his body. The next thing to run out was school supplies, but he managed to take most things out of the lost and found of school. After that came medical supplies, for which he just simply stopped taking care of himself, which choosing to just cover bruises and everything else from his bullies with more clothes. But now the house stopped working. He was aware of the existence of bills. However, he didn't completely understand how they worked. It took a lot more time than it should, but after a while of no one paying for anything, the lights would not turn on anymore and the water would not get hot. And only a week after the water just stop coming out at all. He knew adults were supposed to take care of that, so it only makes sense that no adults mean no service. Azuku needed a bath, so he stayed late and took one at the school property in the gyms. He knew he wasn't allowed there, but he did so anyway. He really wanted to see Auntie Mitsuki. She was really nice to him and was sure to let him take a bath at their house, except that Kachan would not like that and already had a hard time at school to trying to make it worse by making him angry. The highlight of his day was the drawings that he now did for the pro hero. He was hesitant at first, seeing that there was no real connection to the drawings and what he asked him to do, but the pro hero seemed to take a liking to them, to the point he made a request. President Mike, huh? He remembered that name from Kachan's mouth once or twice, but he didn't really know much about him, and he didn't have any means to look him up. Now that there's no Wi-Fi or even electricity at his house, he couldn't even access the school computers as they were strictly watched and only the older students could use them. Primary school wasn't really any better than preschool. He dare say it was worse. The teachers barely tolerate him, most of the time treating him as if he didn't hear rather than not speaking. He often forced to stay after class to clean as a result for being a troublemaker, as the other kids constantly tried to antagonize him. He was tired. Oh, so tired. Maybe it was the poor eating, the night terrors, the bullying, or even the constant feeling of putting everything around him in danger. He was too tired for his age. Azuka's green hair was slowly becoming matted, his curls losing their form, his eyes losing their shine. He was doing poorly in school too, not because it was hard for him to understand, but because he couldn't for the life of him find any of it useful. What was the point in studying if he wasn't going to be graded fairly anyways? Even learning had lost his spark. One of those days, especially bad days that were becoming more and more frequent, he was trying to get some information on President Mike to make his drawing for that night. He entered a merch store. If it was a hero, he was sure to at least find a picture of him with just a piece of paper that said President Mike on it. He went in, he showed the piece of paper to the person at the front desk, and a really old lady took her time putting on her glasses and reading the notes. She smiled fondly and taking a good look at Izuku and a frown appeared on her face. Are you looking for anything special, dearie? She said. And Izuku think that she might not be happy to later discover he had no money. This is what we have on him. His merch runs out pretty fast, so there's not much left. I'm sorry. He makes sure to give her a big smile and the poor lady looked a bit sad. President Mike, a blonde with leather all over, in most pictures he appeared smiling or yelling. His immediate thought of that he was wrong. He looks more like a rock singer or a DJ, if he had to be honest. All of his merch was, looked music related. He couldn't possibly remember the last time he heard music. He used to like to sing. 
Maybe Eraserhead was a fan himself. He was dressed in all black, after all. It looked right by his alley. He tried to remember all the details he could, making a mental map. He was sad he didn't have any yellow crayons to make the drawing pop, but it will have to do what he had. You look a little sick to some degree, sweetheart. Are you okay? Startled, he turned around, the old lady staring at him, analyzing him. I have some tea and crackers if you would like. He debated it. She seemed nice, and in his experience, women seemed to be less harsh with him. Not that he knew many. At the end, he was about to refuse. He was never taught about stranger danger, but in his shoes, it's just hard to trust anyone. Please. Being old is really lonely, you know? She took out the crackers. They were plain ones, but it had been two days since he last ate. His stomach growled awkwardly. He nodded. That afternoon was hard for him. He really didn't notice how he missed someone treating him like an actual person. He spent more than two hours with a lady. She liked to talk a lot. Her name was Nima. She has no grandchildren, and her husband had been dead for over a decade now. She had three ferrets and an intense love for radio shows. Prison Mike was a radio host, apparently. She lived alone and was 71. And the most important thing was she was quirkless. Izuku cried for an hour under her care. The lady was the first one to hug him in maybe one or two years, and she had promised to bake him some apple pie if he came back another day. She helped him with his drawing of President Mike and gave him some color pencils she had laying around. She didn't even have all the colors, but he was so grateful that she didn't even question about his muteness. That day, Izuku learned that the quirkless could live up to 71 years old. But that's also remained that being quirkless meant being lonely. Maybe he could open a hero merch store instead of being a hero. That night, Izuku had the courage to attach a note to the drawing. He had to think hard on what to put on it, but ultimately decided to something simple. What is President Mike's quirk? He added a bunch of random music notes to the question as if to convey the message. He didn't quite know how to write it perfectly, but he hoped he actually got the answer. He waited for the pro hero in his usual hiding spot. A few minutes later than usual, a black shadow jumps from roof to roof, appearing and settling in his usual spot. The pro hero got there, drank his jelly pouch, and opened the drawing, reading the note too. Seemingly taken back from it, he looked up, his eyes searching for something, finally following on his green ones without too much of a hustle. He'd been exposed. It's called voice, he yelled in his direction, in the most casual way a man could, screaming at the ceiling. It was the first time he had realized that the child had green eyes. Shilta lived to regret the following idea to catch his attention by letting him know that he was there. He saw the little kid freeze like a deer at the headlights and ran at top speed in the other direction. It took all his mental strength not to follow him, the guilt starting to eat him alive for the next few days. He couldn't help but notice that the kid didn't look too good that day. Maybe he should have followed him. At his next patrol, the jelly pouch and stickers were left there. The kid nowhere to be found. <laughs> Shelter's an idiot. <laughs> He's an idiot. Oh my goodness. Okay, and also you heard that sniffle? Yeah, I'm having allergies. It sucks. So my voice maybe not be the best. I'm not too sure if you could tell. But we got this done. So if you want to see more, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, blah, blah, blah.